<clears throat> shalom, 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 shalom. Uh, first and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, by Hashem El Shah, by Hashem Chakodesh. Giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, shalom, and salutation to you, Sensei Akim, who calls the four winds, pushing this truth for sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasama God from the DC camp. Coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah Bashim Hakwadash to feed the elect. And on this lesson, uh hopefully hopefully it'll be um a quick one. Um going into uh the morsel the uh, morsel of meat. And as you see right here, this is an image of uh Edom Esau, right? The so called white man. Um according to the Bible, the Edomites. This is Edom Esau when um you know he took the morsel of meat and um and gave away his birthright. All right. And uh this is something every time we read, that's exactly what you envision. So I was really it was good that when I was looking for images, because I always try to when I set up a lesson, I always try to uh look for an image, I always try to start with an image. Um to kind of um you know set up the stage to the spirit for the lesson in which I'm going into. And uh because an image goes back to the word the word image goes back to the word idea. All right. So basically, as you see right here, this is Edom Esau eating a morsel of meat. Um, and he gave away his birthright. All right. So we're gonna go into a lesson and trying to go into um try to get a deeper understanding of um the morsel of meat and what, what Esau did, of course, not only has affected Edom Esau and his people. Right, the so-called white man, but also how, um, you know, it affects us as Israelite and how it could affect us um, negatively as well. All right. So uh, without further ado, um, first, I want to go to Genesis chapter 25 and um, I'm going to start at. Um, uh, I'm going to read the story. OK, it says. Genesis 25 and 23, it says, And the Lord said unto her, well, eh, starting at 22. It says, And the children struggled together within within her, right? Jacob and Esau. And it says, And she, Rebecca, and she said, If it be so, why am I dust? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger. Than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over, like a heavy garment, and they called him they called his name Esau. All right, that's the so called white race. That's the father of the Edomites. It says, And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. All right. It says, and Esau was three score years. And of course, Jacob is who? Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes, all right? Who are the 12 tribes today? So-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right? Um, it says, and Isaac was three, three score years old when he bared them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. All right, now this is where I want you to really, um, the spirit, pay attention. All right, because what we're gonna do, what the spirit is gonna do, is lead us to um, another book. You know, because this story really is really not about. Well, where we're going is really ultimately gonna be about um, Jacob. So um, it says, uh, verse thirty, it says, and Esau said to Jacob, feed me. Remember, it says Esau came from the field and he was faint. All right? So he's coming from the field after grinding, hunting, and he's coming He's coming, and he's tired. He's, he's, he's being weakened, all right? And, you know, so it says, and Esau said unto Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, all right? Going back to uh, Adam 1. <laughs> All right, because Adam means red. All right, Esau means Ashashua. Asha means done. Shua, Wa means done away. All right, 
are wasted away. All right, it says, um, and what was wasted away, as we know, his pigmentation. All right, he was born without pigmentation, and then that's that. That was an omen, omen. Um, now it says, um, verse twenty, verse verse thirty one, and it says, and Jacob said, "Sail me this day thy birthright." And Esau said, "Cause mind you, Jacob, the word uh, Jacob, which is in the Hebrew is Yaquab, it means supplanter. All right, supplanter like a slickster, basically." All right, that's what it means to supplant. All right, so it says, and Jacob said, "Sell me thy this day thy birthright." And Esau said, "Behold, I am at the point to die." So Esau, at this particular point, he's losing. Uh, he feels like he's getting weak. All right, he was grinding, and he feels like he's getting weak. And it says, and Esau said, "Behold, I am at the point to die." And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Now, it's important to remember the story because now we go to the lesson itself, which is uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and 11. And um, it speaks about uh, enduring the chast chastening of the Lord, you know, and how very, very difficult it is, all right? And Hebrews 12 and 11, it says, Now, no chastening for the present seem to be joyous, right? What we're going through, beginning with, you know, apostles on down, the, the men of the Lord in this gospel, if you really have sincerity and you truly believe in Yahweh Bashim Yashah and you're doing everything that you can to the best of your ability, um, you know, the things that, that are going, that you're going through, um, it's absolutely um, a painful, all right? Uh, it's very, very, very grievous. Uh, it says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be jo uh, joyous. And, and that's the thing, the grief and these things that are grievous, these are really chastening of the Lord, all right? Um, it says, now no chastening for the present seem to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So when we're going through what we're going through, the pain, the sorrow, the grief um, that we go through, which you can see that in our faces a lot of times. I mean, we try to really not let it be seen or shown, um, you know, when we get into our element, when we are here, you know, pushing the word. But sometimes you can, you know, sometimes it's very heavy. You can see the, the, the heavy countenance on a brother, you know, all of us. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard, man. It, it really is. It's hard. Um, so it says, um, verse 12, it says, Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down in the feeble knees, right? Why is that? Because remember, even though we're going through what we're going through, nevertheless, you know, these things are yielding peaceable fruit of righteousness, all right? Peaceable fruits of righteousness, what? There's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, um, the faith. Truly understanding Yahweh Bashim al Shah, these are peaceable fruit of, of righteousness, which are going to give us um, uh, an opportunity to be saved, to be delivered, you know, upon the return of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah, whom the world ignorantly, ignorantly known has ignorantly known as Jesus Christ. All right, verse twelve it says, "Wherefore lift lift up the hands which hand down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet." Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It says, 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of the Most High. Now, this is where it's going to get us closer and closer to the history, to the story of um, Esau and Jacob. All right. It says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of the Most High, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See, the reason why Esau made the decision, of course, ultimately, we know it was the plan of the Lord. But when you go into that moment where he's been grinding out there, hunt, you know what I'm saying, and he's coming down, he's actually um, feels like he's about to pass out and die. But at that particular point, He's losing faith, all right? He's losing, you know, he doesn't believe that the Most High is going to, you know, the Most High is going to uh, uh, make sure he all right, right? 
He has no faith and he actually and and, and and he shows the bitterness in saying, hey, when when Jacob offers the meat, the morsel of meat, he believes that, hey, he he believes that, hey, the birthright is means is meaningless to me. Right. Because it looks like I'm going to die. So and that's that that's bitterness. And then, and the thing is, is that when you're in this gospel, you know. The more you, you know, you take these so-called L's, which, you know, really those are level ups, you know, the chastening of the Lord, you, you getting into situation, you getting hemmed up spiritually. Um, you know, it tells you in the earlier uh, verses in Hebrews that the most high love of whom he chasteneth. If the thing is, it doesn't feel good while it's happening. All right. Although it's yielding fruits of you gaining more wisdom, knowledge and understanding, it doesn't feel good because the flesh is not, it doesn't satisfy the flesh when you're being you know, when the most high is chastening, when you're going through hell, all right, that the flesh is never going to be happy. The flesh is not set to be happy. The spirit is joyful because the spirit grows, but the flesh is dying and diminishing. So therefore you feeling, that's why you feel the way you feel. You feel down and out. All right. But you don't want to actually have bitterness be, uh, grow out of that, right. And start feeling bitter, bitter towards the promise, bitter towards the whole by Shemel Shah because, you're not fully understanding why you're being through, put through what you get, you're being put through, all right? And uh, especially not understanding at the moment, because a lot of times we get caught up in the moment because we don't have a, a thorough foresight of how things are going to end up, um, you know, individually. We know how things are going to end up in, uh, in, in a large scale for the, for the hopeful elect, for the elect, but because we are hopeful elect, we don't know how things are going to end up individually. You know what I'm saying? So you get and you might end up in a situation in a particular trial and, and, and tribulation when it feels like, yo, you about to really collapse and crash. You know what I'm saying? The whole sky is falling and uh, uh, you feel like you're about to die. Not necessarily physically you're about to just die. You know, you're about to lose. You're about to, you know, you're just going to go in and go into the red financially, whatever it is. You know, you can't just say, man, fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? And, and just say, hey, man, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to go in the world because this birthright. That the Lord promised, he, he said he promised me that I was going to have the kingdom with the will. But look at me, I'm about to get fucked up. Excuse my language. What's the point? And that's the mindset that Esau had. It was like, well, hold up. Yeah, I'm the firstborn, but if I die right now, it's not going to mean nothing. So immediately Esau already had no faith. He was like, man, let me get this meat. Because I need, I need, right now it feels like I'm about to die. Let me get this meat so I can survive. So Paul is using the same example. For us Israelites say, yo, listen, although we're going through what we're going through and it feels like you're on the edge, you know, you're about to, you're on the edge and it feels like you're about to fall off. Just believe, believe, you know what I'm saying? Believe in your shall believe in your whole body, shall continue to pray, continue to pray nonstop. You know what I'm saying? Don't fall for the bitterness. Don't say, don't say F it. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Just keep grinding, keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? That's what's, the, that's the difference between Jacob and Esau, man. Regardless of what we, 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 we face with, we don't jump off a building. You know what I'm saying? We don't say F that. You know what I'm saying? We don't say F the birth, right? F the promises because we caught up in, in, in a moment, in a situation where it seems as if we're going to get destroyed. All right? It only seems. It doesn't mean that it's real. All right? <clears throat> so, verse 15, it says, Look, looking, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of the Most High. As any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator and profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. And that's the example, you know, that I just gave is you don't want to be like Esau. Because Esau basically got bitter and gave away and said, man, you know what? The hell with that, that birthright. All right, and he gave it away for what the morsel of meat. All right, now let's get into that uh, morsel of meat. Right, that morsel of meat that Esau gave into first. What I want to do, I want to I want to go into Edomore line and look up the word morsel. It says a bite, a my a, a mouthful. So like a, a bite, mouthful, small piece of food, fragment. Small bite portion, all right. So it's getting a bite, it's not getting the whole thing, it's just getting a bite. And the reality is, 
that most of the meat represents this world, man. It represents what Edom Esau has to offer. Because the reality is, just like back then, you know, Esau, quote unquote, because we already know the birthright always belonged to Jacob. You know, Esau gave away his, the natural birthright, you could say, the natural birthright, the firstborn, because the spiritual birthright was always going to be Jacob, and that's what ended up, ended up, being, uh, ended up being established. But the roles, have, the roles have kind of been reversed. You know, um, Esau now, Jacob now is the one grinding, you know what I'm saying? He's the one, you know, grinding, hustling, spiritually, going through whatever he got to go through, catching all kinds of hell in his, in his truth. You know, and and all of a sudden, Esau is the one putting the morsel of meat, man. Now Esau, the roles have been reversed. Now Esau's putting the morsel of meat. Like, hey, this is the world, man. This is what I got going on. You know, all the mandates, all these different things that are going on. And right along with the MOTB, which is the MOTB is ultimately, you know what I'm saying, the morsel of meat. You know what I'm saying? Esau using it. What we, you know, what Jacob did back in the ancient times, Esau flipping it now. He's like, well, hey, you about to, you know, things have, looks like things are falling off around you. You know, maybe you lost your job or you you about to lose your job or whatever situation is going on. You about to lose your family. You know what I'm saying? Because of these 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 mandates and people making their choices, family members choosing to believe in the system, the image of the beast and now you're going to have to lose people or jobs. So what Esau's putting in front of you is that most of the meat now, the MOTB, right? And, of course, you got the precursors, the juice and everything like that. So now you being faced with a situation, or are you going to be like Esau and say, ah, man, you know what? I'm about, to, I'm, about to be, I'm about to be in a red. I'm about to lose everything. I may just die. What's the point of this promise that the Lord, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 made? What's the point of this birthright that Yahweh Bashim and Shah talked about if right now I'm about to get I'm about to get done up? Are you gonna have the same mindset that Esau had? Because Esau now he's doing the same thing now. He now he's throwing a morsel of meat to your face and say, take this if you wanna survive. You know what I'm saying? Give away your birthright. Give away your 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 hope of salvation. And take this morsel of meat, man. This bite, this bite of that of that fruit that you would that you ain't supposed to be having. You know what I'm saying? Which is that that the MOTB, the the image of the beast and the, the MOTB. All right, the karagma. So you have to understand the roles are being reversed. It's always meant to be this way, man. All right. Esau hasn't forgotten what happened all the way back in Genesis. That's why he's putting us in the same predicament that he was back in the book. So as Israelites, we can't, regardless of what we're going through, we have, we have to understand what Esau didn't understand was that, hey, the Most High is always going to put you through situations. But as long as you continue to have faith in Yahweh Bashem al and you don't take that morsel of meat, and you believe in the Lord, he's going to come through for you. All right? Proverbs chapter 23, verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. And you know Esau has an evil eye, man. You know. Look at the Clark Schwab of the world, man. Wolf Charles Rockefeller. All these elite Edomites. All these Edomites got an evil eye, man. The evil eye means they have what? They have a wicked vision. And their wicked vision is about setting up abominations across the world, man. I don't have to, I don't have to, to sit there and name all the abominations that Esau has set up in the virgin daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. the United States of America. All right. It says, eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meat. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. Yeah, go ahead and eat, man. Go ahead and be a part of this. You don't want to end up out there in the cold, you know. You don't want to lose your family. You don't want to die. Take this meat. Take this this bite, this morsel of meat, this this bite. All right. This M O T B, this karagma. Take this and say the hell with you know the promises that Yahweh Bashimash gave you. That's what Esau is putting us through, man. That's how you know this devil remembers what happened back in the in the ancient times during the you know in the book of Genesis. 
So we can't, but we can't do that. We can't move the way Esau moved at that time. Because the Lord is dealing with Jacob. He's not dealing with Esau. But the reality is two-thirds out of the nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, like the scripture said, they're of your, their father the devil, John 8 and 44. So that's, they're going to not have faith. Thus, they're going to believe that if they don't take this morsel of meat, this karakma, if they don't take it, they don't believe that they're going to die. They're going to lose everything. So therefore, they're going to do exactly what Esau did. But the hopeful elect, the elect are not going to do that. We're going to remember that Yahweh Shah is always with us. All right? So, verse 7, now I read that, verse 8. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up. See, that's the thing. That bite that you, that you if you say, oh, you're going to be a part of the New World Order, that, that morsel of meat you want to bite in the New World Order, man, listen, you're going to vomit that up, man. Because at the end of the day, man, you still going to find yourself hemmed up as an Israelite. Taking this morsel of meat, thinking that that's going to allow you to survive a couple more months. Because at the end of the day, man, Yahweh Bashim Rasha is going to send thermonuclear missiles here in Babylon in this Third World's War. The morsel which thou hast eat, eaten shall thou, shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. All right, which that's also what happens, you know what I'm saying? You, if you start, you know, and a lot of guys, that's why the guys are losing their sweet words, man. You know what I'm saying? What, what is losing their sweet words? They're not preaching the proper doctrine because they believe in dabbling into the world and taking, taking a morsel of meat, getting juiced up at the same time, talking about, and thinking that they're still going to have the sweet words of Yahweh Bashim Hashem come out their mouth. It does not work like that. All right? Um... Now, what is our meat? Psalms 42 and 3. It's David. It says, my tears have been my meat day and night. See, it's that grief. You know, that's what's feeding us, man. The, the, the grief that we, you know, the sorrow, you know, that we're exercising. It says, my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, where is thy power? So you got all these enemies, you're woman in. Your woman, most of the time, is your enemy. Your so-called family members, they all like, "Where's your power? Look at you! You catch a hell with the wind, all that." You know what I'm saying? But and we, yes, we hell yeah, we catch a hell. Hell yeah, it's hard. But those tears, that grief, that pain and sorrow is actually our meats because out of that pain and sorrow, what happens? It tells you right here. Hebrews, Hebrews twelve and eleven. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So, you know, we exercise in grief, pain, and sorrow, and, 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 and that's, that's our meat. Because through that, we're able to understand these scriptures. All right? We have access to the understanding of these scriptures through the Holy Spirit, via what? The grief, the pain, and the sorrow that most Israelites do not want to have to deal with. That's why they're going to give in and take that morsel of meat, man. All right? Um, and I'm going to uh, end up with, uh, I think, uh, all right, this is John, John 16, Matthew, so like your Matthew's, 16 uh, 26 it says for what is a man what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world which that's the meat ultimately it's wanting to you know the MOT be you know buying into what's going on in the new world order all right if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul so what you gonna give in exchange for your soul for the son of man shall come in Shall come in the glory of his father, that's Yahweh Shah, right? The son of man, with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. All right. So now I'm gonna finish up with John 6 and 27. Labor not to labor not for the meat with which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. Which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him has the power, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, 
the father sealed. All right, so basically that's what it is, man. That's the, the lesson that I had, the morsel of meat, just, you know, getting into that, uh, um, what Paul meant, why Paul used uh, the example of Esau, you know, giving away his birthright and how right now he's doing it's the exact same thing and he's going to do it on an even higher level and a new morsel of meat, you know what I'm saying, that Esau is going to offer Jacob in a time of trouble and hunger and, and desperate and despair is is it's gonna be that MOTB in you know, Revelation thirteen and fifteen. Corrupt. All right, so I know you brothers, you know, were edified with this lesson. Bakate Ho, Bakate Yaw Shah, Bakate Ho Bashima Shah, Bashmakdash, the Bahana so our apostles, elders of great millstone, shalom salutation, T Sensei Akips, Shalom.